right, today, what I want to do is try to help you think like a molecule. All right? Okay, so let's look at this water molecule. Just water liquid. And we know there's a whole bunch of them, but let's just isolate one water molecule and say, okay, it's got one oxygen in the center surrounded by two hydrogen atoms and the Lewis dot structure looks like this. Remember that oxygen has one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. These hydrogens had one. Connect the dots. You've get, got your Lewis structure for water and we know so we see that there's okay two lone pairs two bonding pairs the four regions getting as far away as possible this is the tetrahedral electronic shape but we don't really care about that because what we really care about is that it's a bent molecular shape so it's bent so this molecule is polar and that's because this oxygen pulls its electrons towards itself a lot more than these hydrogens do. So what's going on is this bond right here is not an equal sharing. It's a polar covalent bond where the electrons are pulled more towards the oxygen. You have a partial positive charge on the hydrogens and a partial negative charge on the oxygen. So what does this mean? Let's think like the molecule. This oxygen's a big bad electronegative atom. It pulls its electrons from these tiny little hydrogens and it has a negative partial charge. So this oxygen has a negative charge. It's mad. It's not real, real mad. It's not a pure negative charge. It's a partial negative charge. It's kind of mad. It wants, it'd be all right if it picked up something positive. So we think about that. Okay, this oxygen has a partial negative charge. These hydrogens have a partial positive charge. Now let's look at a molecule of HCl. HCl is actually a gas when it's just on its own. When it is put in with water, the H actually pops off, giving H plus and Cl minus. So, all right, let's think about this. Let's draw the structure, HCl. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Cl has seven valence electrons, again because it's in group 7a on the periodic table, so you knew that it had seven valence electrons, pulls its electrons towards itself a lot more than this hydrogen does, so it's not an equal sharing. This big bad chlorine pulls these two electrons. Remember a single bond just represents two electrons. But this chlorine pulls its electrons towards itself in a polar covalent bond, so this chlorine has a partial negative charge. The hydrogen has a partial positive charge. So we got this water molecule, partial negative charge, partial positive charge, and a hydrogen chloride, HCl, has a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge. All right, so we're gonna bubble this HCl gas through this water, and what do you think is gonna happen? Well, what happens is this negative end is attracted to the positive. Remember Paul Abdul's song, Opposites Attract. So, yeah, I know it's pretty cheesy, but you guys all know Paul Abdul, whatever generation. Um, opposites attract. <laughs> negative oxygen is attracted to this positive hydrogen, and it actually, this HCl just gives up its proton. It says, you can have it. I, don't, I didn't really want you anyways. This chlorine is much happier as just a Cl minus. So now let's draw the Lewis structure for the Cl minus. It's a Cl with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. So this electron actually pops over to the chlorine, giving this a negative charge. So that's the chloride anion. So now, what have we formed over here? Well, okay, so this H plus has been popped off, and H plus is just a proton. Think about that. All right, so this H plus is attracted to this negative end of this oxygen and what happens is this lone pair of electrons actually forms a bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen and this oxygen is incredibly nice it says you know what I'm happy I'm okay I'm partially mad but you know I'm all right but you know what this this proton's not very happy it's just hanging out as a bare proton ah no good it says, you know, I'll donate my electron to you so that we can share. 
and you'll be happy, little proton. So let's make this proton happy. We're going to convert this lone pair of electrons into a single bond. And now, ah, that hydrogen's happy. It has its duet. That's what hydrogens want, right? They want two electrons. But this oxygen actually donated its electron to the H+, so it has a positive formal charge now. So let's draw the new structure that's formed when you put water in with an acid. It's called a hydronium cation. So it's an O with three hydrogens and a lone pair. Well, this oxygen donated one of its electrons to the hydrogen so it has a positive formal charge because there's one, two, three, four, five electrons. There's only five electrons directly around this oxygen. Oxygen, you know, as in water, you know, when you saw it, should have had six electrons directly around it. Well, this species only has five electrons. That's because it was nice and donated it to that H+. So it gets a positive formal charge. So let's recap. The electrons on the water are donated to this proton of the acid, and then these two electrons that were bonded between the H and the Cl go on to the Cl atom forming H3O plus and Cl minus, so hydronium and chloride. These are all in solution with a lot of water molecules. So this is actually pretty cool. It explains why when you bubble hydro chloride gas in water, it conducts electricity. So we say, well, the reason it conducts electricity is because it must form ions. Well, here is a proposed ion, hydronium ion and the chloride ion. So just saying that this proton popped off and went to the water. Well, in reality, we found experimental evidence that suggests that it's not just a hydronium cation. There's actually other water molecules hanging out with that hydronium. So you've got our new, let's see, let's switch it over. Here's our hydronium, H3O plus, and then other water molecules are attracted to that hydronium. And it gets really complicated and confusing, so let's just simplify it. So watch this. Here's what chemists do to, again, describe this phenomenon in easier to communicate terms. And we just say, all right, H, C, L, and then write AQ. And this AQ just means dissolved in water. Well, that's the same thing as what we said up here. Hydrochloric acid. Remember, this was a gas. And this is a liquid. So we put our states, and then these are, again, aqueous, because the ions are aqueous. So this equation was just water liquid with hydrochloric acid, hydrogen chloride gas gives you hydronium cations and chloride anions, and let's simplify this and say, all right, well, when you put hydrogen chloride gas in with water, then we now have hydrochloric acid. So HCl, when it's aqueous, is called hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid dissociates or splits up into H plus and Cl minus again in water. So the waters are included. So notice H3O plus, if we took off H2O, we're left with just an H plus. So it's the same equation, it's just simplified. It just says HCl aqueous gives H plus and Cl minus. So using our fun little model kit, we can see this. Okay, HCl in water pops off and forms H plus and Cl minus. But you know, since you've followed along and understand that H plus is really just a proton, that you don't have a bare proton just hanging around on its own. No, there's lots of water molecules around that H plus. There's other water molecules surrounding this Cl minus. That's how that HCl gas goes into the solution and, again, conducts electricity. So, pretty cool.